So if I need to name our class today, I would call it the women, the woman, the serpent, and the trial. So uh, let's recall, as we start, that uh, by f the purpose of forming the Garden of Eden, uh, by forming the Garden of Eden, God offered Adam, he said, an alternative path to be very good and reach the Sabbath without ever living on real earth, exposed to sorrow and death. <clears throat> so this was a concession to Adam, give him a, a chance to enter, uh, go to the Sabbath from, from Eden without ever uh, uh, living on earth and seeing all the evil here. Mm. Evil means uh, death and so on. So, <clears throat> all, all in, in, in all, another concession was that in Adam, in Eden, all that Adam had to, to do to win his trial was something very small to comply with God's command and refrain from eating the, from the tree of knowledge, good and evil. So only one commandment. Eating it, we said, would be tantamount to violating the king's command because God not only told him, but also commanded him. And violating God's command is tantamount to a sort of idolatry, rebellion against the king. Then, uh, as a woman, birth of the advent of the woman, God added another second commandment that, she, that uh, they could now violate also in Eden, the adultery. And at the moment uh, the Eden uh, woman was, was born, described as made or form in Eden, uh, the next verse uh, introduced marriage. And the same verse introduced also adultery. We talked about it last time. It's a miraculous verse, if you think about it, to, to, to present both marriage and all the seven possibility of forbidden sexual relationship, all that in one verse. Now we have two, now they have two commandments in Eden, adultery and adultery. But from the two of them, there is a difference. Uh, only if you're eating the, the forbidden fruit uh, will cause them to lose eating. Because the Elohim said, the moment you, you eat of it, you shall die. Die means you lose eating. And you live on earth. <clears throat> so there were two commandments, but only one, only one was really major, so to speak. But uh, we also focus on the fact that uh, uh, in Eden, Eden, Adam learned different level of sin. Promote, this is promotional sin uh, in biblical, uh, the, uh, in biblical uh, meaning, you mean uh, a large, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a noise uh, exposure introducing sin in a large biblical fashion. At first, sin to Adam was, uh, we said, like preaching his father in heaven advice, like a child. Then he grew up in Eden, uh, so to speak, and he, now advice will be enough. And Lokim added a command, like it's like a growing child. He needs now instructions, command, not just an advice. Then he became smarter. And as he gave name, his libido was exposed to the outside. And uh, he was so smart, not only he named the animal, he also named God. He gave the two attributes in the name of Lokim, the YHVH. Adam introduced it in Eden. And the name book where Elohim, and the verse said that every name he gave was a good name. That the name was uh, God intended to. <clears throat> Now sin, because Adam is smarter, so sin become now not only breaching the father advice and a king command, but also something not smart, something foolish. 
that uh, defy logic. It can uh, detrimental to your life. So that's another level of sin. Now, and, and now we, as we ended last class, we said that Adam entered puberty, so to speak, in Eden, and he felt lonely, looking for a spouse. And the parents of Hashem Elohim formed for him a bride from one of his side, and the woman. And with her now, with, with, by her side, Sin is going to take another level and higher than ever before. So now we're going to introduce, going to another level of sin. Now, as we go back to the text, uh, and we read how the Torah now, having introduced Adam and gave him the name and so on, now the Torah turned to describe the spiritual level of Adam and a wife and a woman. What was the spiritual level at that time? In one verse, and it says, and I read it to you, and they were both naked, Adam and his wife, and his wife, he says, <clears throat> so they were married. And they were not ashamed. So they were naked and not ashamed, why? Why were they unashamed of nakedness? So there were several answers out of many. Uh, and some say, that the most common ones say, oh, they were innocent like children. And children are not ashamed. But th that doesn't fit the story here because he, only, he walk around with his wife. The puberty, sexual maturity is not a child. So why, why were they unashamed? They were smart, intelligent, young adult, maybe, maybe young lady and lad. Uh, could be an older teenager. Why, why were they naked and unashamed? So here come Rashi, famous Rashi, that everyone, every child knows that. It's a basic commentary in the, in the Torah, Rashi. And I quote to you what he says on the verse. And on the verse, they were naked and unashamed, Rashi says. They did not know yet modesty. And they did no good from evil. So they were, I am continue to read, and they were, they had already a smart mind capable of giving names, but they did not yet have an evil drive until they would eat from the forbidden tree of knowledge good and evil. So what is Rashi saying here <coughs> that the sense of modesty and shame from nakedness would come to them only after eating the forbidden fruit of good and evil. So it doesn't come from, from the level of, of being smart, but you need to be, it's another aspect of good, being, uh, knowing good and evil, which means a shame perspective. And Rabbeinu Bachye, the Spanish commentary, because they're very common, uh, everybody read Rabbeinu Bahie in high school in Israel. <laughs> so he says the following, he concur, and I read it for you. Not word by word, but basically what he's saying. Adam had already at that stage a mind that could know right from wrong. Now he said, Rabbeinu Bahie says explicitly, <clears throat> Adam knew right from wrong, he was smart. Truth from a lie, which is a feature of logical mind, he said. Otherwise, without this knowledge of right and wrong, how could it be put in trial? Now he continues. Knowing good for evil is not a feature of our logic. Our, our logic says right from wrong, but good, good and evil is not, it is not an aspect of logic. Good and evil, the Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar said, is an expression of our emotional reaction to something we consider ugly and repulsive. That's what he said. From, from, he said the merciful one, she looked uh, she look at the evil people <coughs> as not just a sinner, something evil she hates, she, she's ugly. 
It's impossible for her. She hates. Elohim never hates anybody. He just needs to decide if you're righteous or, or sinner, but he won't hate you. <clears throat> this is an emotional reaction. Clearly, Rabbi Nobahi says what concur with what we have said so far. So prior, I'm continuing to what he, what he writes. Prior to the scene, Adam and the woman were divinely rational. To them, at that stage, nakedness did not seem ugly or repulsive. Not different from nakedness of other parts of the body. If you don't have a same perspective, uh, good and evil in your mind, in your heart, if you just have a logic mind, nothing wrong in being naked. So to them at that stage, he says, nakedness seemed to them not more responsive than any nakedness of any, any other part of our body. <clears throat> Let's move to Sforno, the Italian, uh, Italian commentary. You live by the time of Rashi, which is about the 11th century. And he says something very similar to Rashi. And I quote, to them, to the human at that stage, the act of sexual coupling was natural as eating and drinking. And the sexual organs seem no different than the faces or the hands. So it, clearly all of them concur with the idea that uh, the difference between good uh, right and wrong, and good and evil are two different aspects. So let us now ask. <clears throat> so if I if I if I sum up what would both of my, all the commentary says, major commentary, Rashi, Rabbeinu Bachia, Svono, well, these are the major commentaries. So what they say in short is before the scene. They knew right and wrong, truth from a lie, which is a feature associated with Elohim, the attribute of justice. But not yet good and evil, which are feature associated with Hashem. So let us ask now uh, that uh, we repeat, I'm going to sum up again what we just said earlier. So now that they are ready for the trial, so what they are put to trial, this young couple, that no right from wrong, so what exactly could they violate it? We already said, eating for the fruit, will, will, they will violate idolatry. And as a married couple, if, uh, if they can violate adult, adultery, once another sexual partner become available to them. So both of them can violate adul adultery. <clears throat> if, if they meet, if there's another male sexual partner, he will target her. If there is a female, well, a female has to be married in order to Adam to commit adultery. If it's a female unmarried, Adam could be could violate sexual promiscuity, but not necessarily adultery. So to, to, to commit adultery, there must be another male sexual po potential partner that will entice her. So he's not enticing her because she's weak or because she has a weak mind or because she's vulnerable or because women uh, can easily be targeted, no. Because this, this in order to, to commit adultery, he had no other option. So people took it to so such different level that Torah didn't really mean it. The Torah didn't say anything bad about women. The only, the only reason that he, he targeted her, the serpent, the male, because this is how he could commit adultery. If they had another married couple, oh, so Adam could also violate adultery. So now <clears throat> we, uh, the Torah presented the, 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 the spiritual level of, of Adam and his woman. We know, we understood that before the scene, uh, they do right from wrong. 
And now the Torah presents the serpent. And let's say about the spiritual level of the serpent world. So the Torah says immediately after that, and I read it for you. So but let's focus on what the serpent, what kind of level he, it was. We try to understand what the serpent is. And I read, now the serpent was the most, uh, most arum, it says in Hebrew. Arum means either naked or cunning, smart cunning. We talk about it. it's two meaning of the word arum. Both of them uh, uh, are right here. The, I read again, the serpent was the most arum of all the beasts of the field. So he's a beast of the field, <clears throat> which Hashem Elohim had made. And it says to the it said to the woman, had not Elohim told you that you shall not eat of any tree of the garden? I repeat, had not Elohim told you, something is missing here. We know that in Eden, everything is Hashem Elohim, the two cherubs side by side, the entire chapter, not in the serpent walls. He's the only one that, uh, and then Eve, we answer him at the same level, <clears throat> but he's the only one that doesn't mention uh, you there of okay. And not Elohim told you, of course, he was a serpent. That you shall, a serpent, beast of this field, cannot understand, doesn't know what Hashem is, even if it's smart. And not Elohim told you, uh, not, uh, not to, uh, the moment, you sh uh, uh, that you shall not eat of it, of the tree of the garden. God. Computer here will bother me. Yeah. Okay, so the serpent is similar to the human. He, the, Ibn Ezra and other commentary and Midrash said it was smart. He walked naked and he was unashamed as a, as a, as a beast. And it was smarter than any previous creature on earth. Now, the, what is a room? The, the, the verse says that naked was a room. A room, he said, is naked, unashamed. Let's remember, it was unashamed, naked, like the other beasts of the field. And a room also means smart in a cunning way, in a bad way. He was a plotting. A room is not just smart. If I say uh, somebody is a room, I know, I, I don't. I don't flatter him. If I want to flatter somebody, I say, oh, you are wise, you are smart. If I say you are a room, it means uh, you are smart, you're plotting something against me. Here the word a room is really cunning, planning something bad. And it walked on two legs, as Ibn Ezra said, Midrash said, and it was sexually appealing to the human female. The ideal enticer, sexual partner. <clears throat> so, and and we already notice that he lacked the perception of YHVH. Uh, you see it in the text because he speak as he speak. He never mentioned the whole the, the whole story. He never he will never mention I uh, shame. He always talk about Elohim, and that makes sense since as a beast. Even a sophisticated beast, the serpent could not be aware of the merciful attribute of Hashem. Why? Because as a, all the creature created before Adam, all the creature be, created on the sixth day, before Adam on the sixth day, they were all, all created by Elohim alone. Only Adam, only us, only we were created by the both attributes, actually we created by Elohim, uh, and he planned, uh, he made a room in our hearts that we can admit or accept a, a merciful one in, in, in our heart. But the serpent, even if the serpent eats the forbidden fruit, what, what will happen? Think about it. If the serpent ate from the forbidden fruit, what will happen to it? To the serpent? Nothing. 
He had no room in his heart to accept Hashem. A spider, make him as small as you want. Make him build spaceships, but in a million years from now, it will be terrible because he, this spider will never know what mercy is. He can destroy everything. <clears throat> so a serp as a, as a serpent has no, no clue what Hashem means, what merciful one means. And that's why when he talked to her, to the woman, he had not Elohim told you this and that. He, he forgot to say, but he doesn't know that Hashem exists. But Adam, on the con in contrast, if you think about it, because he had been created a room in his heart, it is ready to accept Hashem if, if Adam accepted it, it's up to Adam to accept it or not. Adam could understand what good and evil is once he ate from the fruit. That's enormous difference between, between a serpent and a, and a human. Yes, they were on the same level now, both of them human and they were a good match. They were all on the level knew right from wrong. At that time, even, even Adam had a very vague awareness, awareness of what Hashem is. But at least Adam has the potential to, to accept Hashem in it and become very good. But not the serpent. So what was the serpent then? Let's think about it, what the serpent is. First of all, what was the motive? The motive, uh, the rabbi said, why, why the serpent attacked? What, what, did, what could he gain from that? Some said, said some, it's very common to, to think that, uh, that serpent stands for Satan. And he was especially created by Hashem to allure them to sin. That's totally wrong. Many, many commentaries say it's totally wrong because we see that the serpent itself was punished. The serpent itself stood on a trial. He knew right from wrong. He knew not to lie, and he lied all the time. Everybody every, what he's saying was, was a lie. So the serpent itself stood on a trial, like, like the human. But, so, but it's true, it is true, the middle says, beautiful, a beautiful metaphor. Satan rode on it like a camel. And that beautiful depiction, I mean, Satan is, a, is, a, is in charge of, uh, is it our prosecutor in the heavenly court? And he uses, he uses, he, he, can, he looks, he uses the, the serpent as a vehicle uh, to uh, maybe a, the serpent once he allowed people to sin, then Satan or our prosecutor capture it and bring it to, to, to the court. But with the serpent itself is not Satan. In fact, Satan in, 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 in the Hebrew uh, Bible, in, our, in the Hebrew in meaning, Satan is simply a prosecutor. It's not a devil and it's not an independent force. It's simply a force in heaven, a court appointed as a prosecutor. It does its job and he has no free will. <clears throat> so, Again, so what was the serpent itself? Now, well, let's think about it. There are many interpretations. We said it's not Satan. So what, what is it? What was it? Uh, and the be I, I, I read so many interpretations and explanations. But the best way to look at the say what the serpent is simply to see it in the context of the story of creation. This is actually, it's a, it is a continuation of, of Moses says in chapter one. It just few, few verses after that. So if you go back to, to the story of the sixth day, <clears throat> the end of chapter one, just before the story of Eden, uh, we recall, now I want, to, I want to understand what the serpent is. So I give you a, another possible explanation that makes sense in our mind, in 21st century mind. So we recall now that as a Moses tells us the story of creation, beautiful story that can be validated by science, billion of years, we know, we talk about it. And Moses said that on the sixth day of creation, just before making Adam, again, a day 
a day capital D is million of years. <clears throat> so just before creating Adam, Elohim first created before Adam, cattle, bees, and smart crawling creature. Just before Adam was made, the last one was crawling, were crawling, crawling creature like spiders, ants, bees, smart, we get social creature that can already create their own colonies. Now scientists said, so let's see, a scientist said there was a, a race. Uh, which, which, which creature will develop mind, smart mind on, on earth? And now Moses says, let's see, let's go back to what Moses said. So at that point of creation, just before making Adam, uh, Elohim can stop for what? Stop, made a stop in the middle of the day, unusual. Only the Tuesday that he did it once before planting life on earth. Now again, he paused, he said, and he, he made a midday trial. <clears throat> and he said, the trial, he said, we know the trial means some animal are wiped out and some animal continue. And he said it was good. It means some, some were gone, some, some were gave the green light to, to move on. Uh, so what was the trial? The trial, we said, uh, God wanted to see, to, to decide whether to put Adam on earth or not, because the next day, next, the next verse after the trial, he says, let us make Adam in our form and our view. So the trial was to, to, to put Adam on earth or not, or to make Adam or not. So, uh, so that trial, what does it mean trial? God had, had two options to continue creating like ever before and to continue the line of, uh, of, 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 of animals that describe on the sixth day, you know, beast, cattle, and calling. And now allow the, allow the, the calling creature, the serpent, let's say the serpent from the calling creature. The serpent here represented this calling creature, allow it to develop its own mind, and, and it, may, it may take another million years, but for God is nothing. So could, God could have waited and, and allow serpent, small smell serpent to, to grow, take over, to walk, to speak, to be very smart like Adam, and, but it will lack it will lack the perception of YHVH, of Hashem, and it will never be very good. It can be good, but smart, but having lacking the, lacking the perception of merciful man in your heart, you can never be very good. And if that happens, you cannot, Elohim will not enter the Sabbath, and it will uh, cease his work abstain from doing any work. And in fact, as Rashi said, it would actually eliminate our universe as he had done to many, many, many other universes before. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this could happen if the serpent would be allowed to be alone and to move on earth from the, to the south, towards the future. Uh, it will develop beautiful colony, beautiful mind, but it will never be very good. On the other hand, if he puts Adam on earth, Adam could be very good because he has a room in his heart to, to, to be very good, <clears throat> to accept Hashem. So it was a crucial decision. So, so here, uh, uh, here uh, what, now we understand what, what, what the serpent was in, in, in this virtual garden of Eden. Uh, Shem could, these two possibilities, uh, the Adam, the spiritual Adam, form Adam in Eden, and with it, the other possibility, the virtual serpent, also, and there are two options. <clears throat> in fact, if Adam wouldn't sin, both of them would, would arrive to the Sabbath intact, never living on earth. This could be a very, very nice option. 
and we know if if but if they sin, then uh, Adam will be put on earth, facing facing uh, evil. But for for from God's perspective, uh, when we want we want Adam to be very good, Adam can be very good on earth. If he fully fully comprehend now what evil is, and this and he and he. Uh, allow Hashem to dwell in his heart. And actually the verse says that, uh, it, that this, now we understand what the verse is saying, the serpent was smarter, wiser than any other animal before it. So this now presents the, 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 the creature that could have been developed on earth uh, had not Adam been here. So what was then the goal? Why, why did the serpent, now we understand what the serpent was in Eden, what did it represent? An option to, to develop an animal that does not know God, uh, uh, shame. So what was the purpose? Why did he, why did he what made him uh, talk to, to the woman? He said, not because it was fire, but because uh, if, if, if Rabbi said, obviously, he lasted the woman. He lasted the woman and woman. Now I figure out <clears throat> that if they eat from the forbidden fruit, God will depart from the marriage. And if God is not present in your marriage, it falls apart. And uh, he, he and she will be available to him. She will fall a prey to his charm. That makes sense. So that's why it it it, it tried to allow allow her to eat the food to uh, to make God the uh, depart from them, and she will fall apart to it. She will fall a prey to him. Now, of course, we said this. She was a goal. His goal because he wanted to commit. He was a male and she was a female, and that's how she. 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 If if he come if he, if he, had a sexual relationship with her while married, she would violate adultery. Now I know that many many commentary. It's almost ubiquitous. To say that uh, uh, she that the serpent had a sexual relationship with a woman, I argue. I have the feeling that's not the case, <clears throat> because the committing adultery is such a such a filthy thing that I cannot touch it to our mother and mother Eve, and not only that, it. it it's impossible that uh, she would stay married to Adam. If you violate adultery, you should divorce. Could be that uh, some say that just being alone with a married woman in a room without her husband, that's tantamount to adultery. Fine, I don't know. That could be a case of adultery, but basically, uh, could be, but uh, I think we stick to, as Rashi said, Rashi actually focused on the idolatry part. Uh, he, 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 he actually, the serpent wanted to, to make her, so to speak, divorce in Eden. If, if God is departing from them, from the marriage, oh, so, so that she can, do, she can be hits. Now, the rabbi also said, so what, what, why, so she, the burden is on her shoulder. The whole future of mankind is on her shoulder. What about him? Is he as a free lunch? He's just around there? What, what? No, the rabbi said no. Adam also was enticed by a, a by Lilith, the famous Lilith. Lilith is a is a figurative female figure, a counterpart of the serpent. Beautiful Lilith, lost so many legends about Lilith. 
And she was there as a counterpart of the, of the serpent. She wasn't married to the serpent. The beasts are not married. Uh, God is not between them. But she, uh, Adam was fairly prey to her child. So what sin he, did he commit? Lilith was not married to the serpent. She was only a sister or whatever. But uh, if Adam had sexual relationship with her, he just committed sexual promiscuity, which is forbidden. It's also kind of adultery, sexual promiscuity, but it's not as morally bad or evil in the eyes of Hashem as a clear adultery when it's sanctioned by God. So there is a difference between what Adam could do at that point, having no other option. He didn't have any other married couple to, to engage with. He had only Lilith, so sexual promiscuity. But uh, that's also fear. So don't, don't look, don't look. I always think you know, when, I, when I hear people talking about barely where women or men were, the pure, oh, she, she did it. Well, Adam, was, Adam was also guilty of a lot of fears. Okay, let's <clears throat> finish today with the sin itself. So let's talk a little bit about the, the primordial sin. <clears throat> and I'm read to you. Now we move, the Torah moved to the sin itself. And the serpent, in it, it, in it said, the serpent said to the woman, it's not a king said, you shall not eat of any tree of the garden. He mentioned only king. And the woman said to the serpent, we, we may not eat from the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, a lokim had said, I said, you shall not eat of it. Talking to, the question is, why did she use also only Elohim and didn't mention YHVH? Could be that uh, she knew that the serpent couldn't understand what, what Hashem is. Or could be that she herself, we said at that point before the scene, they were not so aware of YHVH. Only by eating the food, they become suddenly aware of, it, of her. At that point, only right from wrong, but not bad. So that maybe for her also, she was the same level, so to speak, almost to like, like, like the serpent. So they were a good match. Wow, this is a, this will explain why they, they were good, potentially good couple, the serpent and her. And not a, a, only on this, Three Elohim said, she said, that mentioned Hashem. And the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. Here he completely li is lying. You shall not surely die. For Elohim knows that the day you eat of it, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be like Elohim, knowing good and evil. What a liar. What is a what a, what a, a stupid serp, uh, serpent? Uh, I couldn't understand that good and evil is not in Elohim's eyes. He said, Open, the moment you eat of it, your eyes will open and you will be like Elohim, knowing good and evil. He had no choice. He didn't know that good and evil has completely different dimension. Nothing to do with Elohim judgment. You'd have care, okay. the serpent couldn't understand it. So here he's, he's not liar, he's simply revealing, betraying is a beast-like spiritual level. So let's analyze what he was saying. You can actually, probably like seven point here. I'll make it quick. Like, what, what the serpent is selling. He said, it not a Lokim said, now in English it says, and not Elohim said, it doesn't sound as, as, as uh, harsh as in, in Hebrew. In Hebrew, it, it, the, 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 the 
translation should be like this. How could Elohim say to you something like that? How could you told me that the eternal not to not to not to touch it? How could he say something to you to eat it? No, how could he say something? Like it? So it sounded like Elohim deprived from them something good, which is not the case. <clears throat> Number two, he said, and Elohim said he completely was oblivion to YHVH. Number three. You shall not die, he says. You, of course, you shall not die. He is a liar. He knew the truth, but he lied. And you shall be like a Elohim, knowing good and evil. He said, this is betrayal of the fact. He, he was not unaware of good and evil. It's not, nothing to do with Elohim, John. Now, it, it, the way the, uh, I think Ibn Ezra said it, or, <clears throat> that the way the way he, he talked, he, he mentioned like knowing a look, know, knowing evil is something reward. You know, if you eat it, wow, you, you open your eyes, it's beautiful. So you get some reward. But we know that uh, uh, knowing evil is not, not a reward, it's a burden. Living on earth, seeing evil around us, seeing animals eating each other, killing, death. So if we had, had we not had why to be a merciful spectacle in our eyes, if we just were, were animals, it would look fine. What's wrong is killing and eating is an animal. They didn't, you know, you, had we been an animal like a serpent, we wouldn't have any, any idea that something can be different. But very, living in this universe with very shame spectacle on our eyes and looking at the uh, children dying, uh, animals, cancer, terrible things happen. Of course, uh, it's, it's something could be, could, be, uh, could be otherwise, could be corrected, tikkun. So it's not a reward living here in, in such a, uh, wearing these glasses of uh, shame. We knowing good and evil in the, in, in the world that is made by Elohim. It's a burden, it's not a, it's not a reward. So he, so he didn't say the truth. Number six, he twisted Elohim intention. He, he sounded like Elohim feared competition. Elohim did tell you not to eat it because he feared it. If you, if you eat, eat it, you will be, you know, good and evil like him. He brought about competition, something good for you. Hashem, uh, Elohim told you not to feel competition. Number seven, and he took advantage of the fact that uh, <clears throat> she, didn't, she didn't hear directly God talking to Adam. So she thought that touching, touching the tree is enough to, to, to cause terrible things. And the serpent picked it up, and <clears throat> and she said, she said to the to the serpent, God told us if we touch the food, uh, something happened to it. So he said, no, not so. Uh, and he pushed her to the tree. And once she she put, she touched the tree, and lo and behold, nothing happened. Oh, so God lied to us, and that's that she accepted uh, the the serpent world and she ate it. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was delight for the eye and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took off its food and ate it and gave it to her husband and with her and he did it, eat it. So it was a gradual scene comes gradually. First she looked at it, then she ate of it, she enjoyed it, then she enticed her husband to do the same because you know what? To being a serpent is uh, infectious. Uh, now she becomes a serpent. She, she enters her husband. Uh, so a sinner, that's, a, that's true. A sinner always tried to allow other people to join him. Now, what really happened? Now we come to the crux of the story. What, what did happen to them once they ate? The food. So, what really happened? 
So on that, I think we'll learn next week. I'll stop here and uh, any question. By the way, I want I will I forget to tell you, I know it's a lot of material. Uh, if you if you want to read it, maybe one day we'll publish it. But uh, as Rod says, but if you read it, uh, I have oh, oh, look at the uh, seven Noahide seven commandment dot com Noahide seven command dot com and look at the. Uh, it, there are many several sections there. Look for uh, for the Noahide for the gen for classes for uh, for Noahide for Genesis, and you will see the ex extra extra of our uh, discussion there in written, so you can go over it and digest it. I know it's a lot of material, and I speak, I speak, and you have no nothing is written here and it can evaporate from your mind. Okay, any questions?